Yo, Steel Bills, what's the deal, man? It's Friday. Got some big fights on this weekend, man. Uh, Anthony Yard get back up there. You know, he get back in action this weekend. I'm going to definitely be looking forward to doing that or watching that, man. Um, my son, I got to take my son to his first bat. Training, literal training, one-on-one -on -one training to further develop this boy's game. Uh, we're gonna see how this work out, man. As you know, as time progresses. But peep game, man. Let's get into this shit, man. And that's um Chris Colbert, man. Um He got stopped for the second time in a row in his last fight. And um I didn't watch it, man. I, I gotta start watching Pro Box, man. I know um Nicholas Walters and Jojo Diaz are getting in there. I don't know when, but I, I that's a fight that I definitely want to see. And Pro Box is really doing good work, man. They're they're revitalizing fighters' careers who, you know, they may have got off to a bad start. They may have hit a rough patch in their careers. Come on on, come on over to Pro Box, man. I mean, uh, Tevin Farmer, he fought on Pro Box. He just fought Ray Mamutaya. Now it's on the whole, you know, Williams and Peta for the Mexican night fight, man. I, I, you know, so I'm all for that, man. I'm, I'm all for that. They're really doing good work, man. But as far as Chris Colbert is concerned, man, um, Man, listen, um, I don't like how people are celebrating his loss, man. Um, you know, you know, I, I so I went and I looked at Fred Hawthorne's, uh, his, 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 his video and he just really seemed like to be a little too celebratory for me as far as Chris Colbert losing. And before that, he was kind of, you know, picking you know, throwing shots at him for being, you know, relegated to a pro box fighter after fighting on PBC shows on Showtime and all that shit. Now you, you know, and on, on, on you know, on um, pay-per-views and everything. Now you're fighting on Pro Box on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? So he seemed to be a little too celebratory for me for that. And then when he loses, man, it was just the, the shots that he was taking at him. I'm like, man, where is this shit stemming from? Where is this shit stemming from? And I didn't, before I jumped the gun, I'm like, man, just, I don't know if it's something... But no, after that, I went and I watched the video of Drew Titan because Drew Titan said something about him as well. And the criticisms that he levied against him, you know, it made sense why somebody would have a lot of resentment about, you know, towards young and you dig, um, uh, 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 you know, it made sense. It, it, it made sense. It made sense. Well, you know, I guess he said something like, I need, mean, I want to fight in Brooklyn because and I'm going to need us because we don't support you dig talking about us, you know, really trying to play us, you know, put us in a position as to what you like. Nah, we don't support our own, which is there some merit to that? Yeah. But you got to think, man, Floyd Mayweather is to this day. He's a master biggest. The most wealth in the sport of boxing in the history of the sport. You dig? And that was through black hard earned dollars. You dig me? So. We do show support. We definitely show support. But we also do, you know, we stream. Everybody streams today. Let's not get it fucked up. We just not gonna relegate this to this black society. Everybody streams or whatever, man. But we do support, but people are expecting support when it's not necessarily something that they, you know, just you, what are you doing to support? You dig, you dig, show us something, you know, just you so, <sighs> you gotta amass a supporting system. You dig what I'm saying? When you starting off. You're taking them baby steps. You're still on training wheels. Your loved ones, your rellos, your wife, your family, your immediate people, your immediate circle is going to be the one who comes out and supports you. As you grow in popularity and you become a high commodity, that's when you begin to galvanize the support of the people abroad. You feel me? So I can get what, you know, I I can get why he would, you know, they would feel some type of way about him saying that. Completely plausible. Completely plausible. But I'm not even gonna lie, man. I think the um this disposition that they have with this youngin is due to how vigilant he was about the Deontay Wilder fucking glove gate shit. I remember watching that video and I remember him, you know, just that's the video that Deontay maybe not Deontay Wilder, let's not say Deontay Wilder, but maybe somebody from his team, or it may not even be somebody from his team. It could just be a supporter of his. They flagged that video. With uh, you know, with Nestor Gibbs on there, and they got that shit taken down. All right, you know, just you know, whatever. But his, you know, his stance on that was like he just he can't fuck with Wilder, or not he can't fuck with Fury, bro. Like, no, you ain't you 
talking all, you know, spite water and all that. Like, nah, he just wasn't hearing of it. And after he said that shit, that's when he really started to get the backlash from the people. And I'm look, I'm I watched this shit unfold. Like I said, with Drew Titan, he him saying that, you know, that, you know, that we don't support it, and then him not showing up on Barbershop Conversations platform or whatever to do an interview. Maybe that right there harbors some bad, you know, some some um some animosity towards him. Possibly. You know, I won't even say possibly. I know for a fact it has, man. You dig? You, you look forward to you look forward to having somebody who's a, you know just if you're covering something, if you're a part of something, and a fighter that you look to support, or just somebody that you know could bring some traffic to your cha- to your channel, you kind of look forward to them coming on your platform when they say they're gonna be on there. And for him to just not show up like that, yeah, I mean, I get it. You dig? That could piss somebody off. That could definitely piss somebody off. But I just feel like a lot of this shit is coming from his disposition with Deontay Wilder and that Glovegate shit. That all that all that you know all you know that you know that um what they call that you know the murder conspiracy theories and all that shit. Because it it's not like it's just with them. It's not like it's just with the LG the LDBC and just Wilder supporters. It was a, on you know on, you know as far as content creators concerned. But it was just a broad. I remember I, I'm in these spaces and I'm listening to these niggas make these posts about him and it's oh he a coon he this and that and the third he he yada 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 and i'm like well a lot of the shit that i was seeing it was them reposting that video of what it is that he had to say about deontay wilder and glovegate and i'm like bro (laughs) did y'all do charlo the same way because charlo said the same you're like man that they asked Char- Jamal, the one, the main Charlo they was pushing. They never pushed Jamal in the same capacity they pushed Jamal. And they asked Jamal, do you think that Tyson, you know, Tyson Fury cheated Deontay Wilder? He was like, nigga, no, Tyson Fury punched the shit out of Deontay Wilder. And he started laughing. He started laughing. And I didn't see y'all bang on him. Matter of fact, I seen y'all bang on Jamal. I seen y'all bang on Jamal. I'm like, this shit is... It was it's blowing me. Y'all pick and choose with the you know the niggas that y'all want to support and that y'all don't want to support, man. So how was it that you got twins and the the brothers are saying the same thing? But the one that y'all are put the one that y'all are gonna castigate is the one that isn't getting pushed in the same capacity as the brother, as the oldest brother. You know what I'm saying? And that's the it, coincidentally that was the one that Deontay Wilder decided that he wanted to talk about slapping or whatever the case may be, man. I, I, just, I feel like this, man. You know, you can't be mad at a nigga for... Man, listen, bro. I'm on... I'm on... Uh, nobody cheated Deontay Wilder, dog. Nobody. They didn't cheat that, man. And for all the cooning that y'all claimed Chris Colbert was doing, where was this energy when Wilder kept the white boy and let Mark uh, Mark Breland go? Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about that. But it's just... The, it's the acceptable thing to see here and throw Chris Colbert to the side. Now, granted, his career, you know, went kaput after, you know, shortly after that shit, man. He's had some controversial wins, and he's had, you know, Hector Luis Garcia, Rayo did him greasy. But nonetheless, it's like, yo, where's the, where's the, where's the supporting base? Where's the supporting base, you dig? Especially if y'all pushing this black excellence shit. A lot of you niggas is PBC acolytes. Up until last night, he was a PBC fighter. And y'all niggas gonna bang on him like that because he lost? Like, damn, bro. Because y'all are so enamored with the fact that Deontay Wilder got robbed. You dig? Like, the nigga needed to put Anvil in his glove and go oops upside his head. You dig? Nobody ever pays it. Nobody paid any mind to the... Not nobody. But his acolytes never paid attention to the fact that this man had a multitude of excuses after the loss none of it they didn't want to you know it wasn't it it was uncomfortable to point to logic it was uncomfortable to talk about him putting on access pounds to go into a fight when you're not your body isn't accustomed to fighting at that weight you dig they rather talk about spike water and anvil in the gloves and you know uh, 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 uh the suit the suit that that man was wearing, it did. It just—it was a multitude of things other than him being ill prepared, illy prepared, fighting, you know, gaining too much muscle, and not necessarily doing the road work. So, you know, just, man, I ain't gonna cap, man. Deontay Wilder, I feel like looked his best against Zilay Jane. He looked his best against Zilay Jane. 
I just, even though he got knocked out, those five rounds showed me something, man. He dictated, he maintained distance really well. He worked off of the jab. He set the two up like beautifully. This is why I don't castigate um, Malik Scott. I I, I don't, I, I don't castigate him. I mean, he's doing what it is that he can, you gotta, he is so, you know, he, he he's committed to preserving this man's ego. So you got to find a way to work around that shit, man. And he's, he's found ways to navigate it to a certain degree. He found ways enough to navigate it, you know, to, to get him to where he looked the way that he looked in there against Zilei Zhang. Wilder wasn't ever going to be Zhang. But he showed signs of a fighter who was, you know, looking to grow and looking to learn. I never saw that version of Deontay Wilder that I saw against Zilei Zhang really had, you know, I saw, I started seeing, um, you know, just, levels in this game i honestly did i honestly did i honestly did man so i, I just I, I don't know man i don't i don't i don't i don't know man y'all pick and choose who y'all want to call a coon you dig y'all pick and choose who y'all want to call coons man and i don't like it man you got some of the most prolific brethren in the, you know, in, in black American history, man. Khalid Muhammad and Malcolm X. Omawale. They had their skirmishes. They had their differences due to the fact of who their, you know, who their spiritual teachers were. Khalid Muhammad came up under the tutelage of, um, of uh, 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 Louis Farrakhan. Louis Farrakhan came up under the tutelage of, you know, Elijah Muhammad. So did Malcolm X. And the shit that Malcolm X was putting into the universe about Elijah Muhammad, of course, that's going to ruffle feathers of, you know, he that's he's somebody's spiritual father. That's somebody's spiritual father. You dig what I'm saying? And even with, Louis, you know, uh, Louis Farrakhan's criticisms against Malcolm X, he's never came out of his mouth and called him a coon or no shit like that. Elijah, Ma not Elijah Muhammad, but Khalid Muhammad has never came out of his mouth and called Malcolm X a coon or nothing like that. They may disagree with some of the shit that he said, but there is no question that they, you, there's no evidence supporting a, th a, a theory of Malcolm X being a coon. There's no evidence of that. That man's work was way too thorough. So you can have your disagreements. You can have your skirmishes. But when skirmishes turn into slander, that's where I start to draw the line at, man. And when I look at someone like Chris Colbert, I'm looking at slander. I'm looking at slander, you dig? Because y'all had these high hopes for, 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 for Deontay Wilder as if he was the next coming of Muhammad Ali. And that just wasn't the case. He's not ever, he was, he's not ever going to be Muhammad Ali. He's not ever going to be the voice that Muhammad Ali was. He, just, he, he wasn't, bro. He, he wasn't. He is incapable of filling those shoes. 99% of fighters are incapable of being Muhammad Ali. It's just, he, he was just way too fucking, he was way too pivotal of a figure. He was way too gravitational, stood on business. He was extremely intelligent and articulate. It's a difference in being intelligent and being able to disseminate it in certain environments. You can get on camera and the minute you get on camera, the shit that you want to say that you were saying so fluently in a more closed circle, when you get that camera in front of you, you stammering, you're looking for the right words to say, you're looking for, uh, you're taking too time, you're too much time to bridge your point together and all that shit. It's a different ball game when there's a certain amount of pressure put on you. Muhammad Ali flourished in front of that camera and he stood for the people and he was unapologetic about that, man. And for that, you will never... There is never going to be a fighter who can hop out in the city of another nigga talking about where's Joe Frazier at in his own city. Ali is the only nigga who can do some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So Deontay Wilder was incapable of being Muhammad Ali because everybody is incapable of being Muhammad Ali. But y'all wanted to hold that man to that esteem. Now, granted, it does feel good to have a real, you know, a representation of yourself as a heavyweight world champion, as a cha in any, you know, in, in any, in any sports arena, in any political arena, anywhere, anywhere where they're showing excellence and they're not just there existing, they're not shaming and turning their back on the people who cultivated them to be the individual that they will be, you know, eventually become. That's a beautiful thing, man. So it's dope to see Deontay Wilder live in his skin, man. He's dark skin. He's dark, you know, that he was really, you know, he's really, he's sun-kissed. 
He's originally melanated. It's a beautiful thing for that brother to walk around and it's, you know, just that comfortable in his skin. Dope. I love it. I dig it. I fucks with it. So I understand the yearning and the needing for another heavyweight champion. A Amer black American heavyweight champion. I get it. I get it, man. But at some point, you have to exist within the realm of reality. And these niggas did not like existing in that realm of reality. It was too discomforting to them. It was too discomforting to them, man. So anything he said, they went with. Anything they said, he went with. The fact that young Pharaoh was up there putting out petitions to get Deontay Wilder's old back and all type of what, bro. I remember this shit unfolding, and I'm really looking at these dudes like, yo, y'all are, y'all are flat out of your minds. I still argue with one of my guys to this day about that. I'm like, this is wild. This is this is this is laughable. How y'all niggas keep talking to me like this nigga got cheated, bro. And everything that happened to him in the rematch happened in the trilogy. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Pause. My phone is ringing. Yeah, everything that happened to him in the rematch happened to him in the trilogy, man. Ear busted, knockout loss, all of that shit. Everything happened. Okay, pause. Yeah, man. Um, everything that happened to that dude in the rematch happened to him in the you know in the trilogy. Everything that happened to him happened in the trilogy. The, the same commit the, the the athlete you know the Nevada Athletic Commission that same commission was used in the trilogy as a pole and in the rematch you dig if it's a problem with the commission man why are you going back why are you not going in Brooklyn why are you not going somewhere in LA why are you not going anywhere else but Vegas to fight that fight took place in Vegas it's, why you dig it's just it was way too, it's just way too much evidence proving the contract, you know, just what about isms. You can't necessarily quantify what about isms, man, because I can say a multitude of things to paint a picture on a what about ism. So when you got somebody like Chris Colbert, who's not necessarily going along with the, you know, with the with the general consensus of things, I agree with him. I'm sorry, but I do. No, actually, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry, bro. I'm I'm not. And instead of niggas just standing like, all right, cool, that's just get down and arguing against that, he's castigated and deemed a coon. He's deemed a coon. Jermel Charlo gets a check, attack, but Jamal doesn't? What are we doing here, man? What are, what are we doing, man? I get that, you know, it's a lot of times it's real easy to... to to dislike somebody who's flashy and flamboyant, because you know, Youngin was flashy and flamboyant. The colorful, the colorful, uh, the colorful hair and all that. I ain't never been a fan of that shit. Now, Grant, I'm not a fan of Chris Colbert, man. I, I, I've never been a fan of his fighting style, man. Um, it just even with you know the slickster style, just it, it, I'm just I'm I'm not the biggest fan of that. You dig? I like to see people be able to mix it up. I like to see be able, I like to see people be able to mix it up, man. I just that's just what it is with me. And have snap on the shots that you're throwing. But the dude was a ta he's a talented fighter. Him at his peak, he was a talented fighter. But I've never been a fan of him. So this ain't me, man. Why you're clipping that Chris Colbert, man? Nah, it ain't none of that. It ain't none of that, man. It is it's it's me. It, but it is me seeing some shit, a glaring fucking flaw with a lot of you cats and and contradictory with a lot of you niggas. And you know, it's me calling y'all out on it. Because it's lame. Damn, man, why y'all here? I, I ain't never, I'll never get here this early now. Y'all, you motherfuckers is here. Ain't that a bitch? But yeah, oh, bet. Hell yeah, I gotta get in the shade. Yeah, move up, please. But I, I, I see that shit, and I, I just think that shit is lame. It, it's the lamest shit in the world, man. Y'all are celebrating this man's downfall. Y'all are celebrating this man's downfall. Y'all know I can't stand Deontay Wilder, but what did I come on here and say after I watched that Zee Lejean fight? I took no pleasure in seeing that shit. I took more pleasure in him losing to Joseph Parker because he still finished the fight on his feet. He didn't look, you know, the, he didn't have that, you know, the agony of defeat on his face. After that Zee Lejean 
you know, knockout loss, I was like, yo, bro, like, I, this shit just, this isn't soothing my soul right here. I, I take no... I take no pride in watching that. I take no, I get no joy out of seeing this shit, bro. Like this shit is actually sad to see. It's sad to see. I don't want to see that shit. So I'm not about to sit here and, you know, just be overjoyed about the fact that a nigga got knocked out. I, I'm not. I, I'm not. But y'all are, look, y'all are, you know, when Ryo, when, when Ryo did what he did to him, it was niggas jumping for joy for that shit, man. I'm just, oh my God, that's some wild dudes. All this because he said Deontay Wilder didn't get cheated. All this because he was, nah, I ain't believing that shit. Niggas is going to be braggadocious. When they speaking on something, it's a way, it's just a certain way niggas is going to speak on it. Like, fuck out of here. That nigga doing it. Y'all, man, fuck out of here. Nigga, nah, nigga, no, nigga, shutting shit down. Y'all know how we are as a people. I, I just, I think that shit is corny for y'all to be on that shit, man. I think that shit is corny. He a coon because he wasn't riding the train of him, to, of, 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 of niggas saying, hey, you know, he was cheated by Fury? No. No, that doesn't make you a coon. You can simply say, I disagree with your stance on it and give, you know, context to why you disagree with it. And y'all have a civil discussion about it in that paradigm or however the discussion decides to go, man. But it's to sit there and label the nigga a coon because he said Deontay Wilder ain't get cheated by Fury. Y'all niggas is some busters for that. And now y'all are celebrating this man's loss. I realize I I'll be sitting back looking at y'all niggas like, for real? This is what we doing, huh? Okay, bro. Some weirdo shit. It's some weirdo shit, man, with y'all niggas, man. This shit is shameful if you ask me. I just, uh, that shit is whack. That shit is whack. Don't celebrate that man's laws just because he disagreed with Deontay Wilder's glove gate theory. That shit is corny. So don't sit there and celebrate that shit. Y'all niggas ought to be ashamed of yourselves, man. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas swear y'all the most pro-black. Y'all swear y'all the most down for the cause of ass niggas. Y'all the most stand on business, ten toes, RBG, gorilla ass niggas. That man isn't a traitor, you know, a treason, a, a treasonous nigga to the people. He hasn't shown that. He hasn't shown that. He said some problematic shit. Yeah, I could, I could agree with that. Yeah, he said some problematic shit. But he don't support you. Yeah, I can agree. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that shit is wild, bro. You gonna sing a little stuff like that? Okay. I can understand that, man. But that I just get a feeling that this shit isn't coming from that. The majority of the animosity that y'all got for this nigga is coming from because of how he, his stance on Deontay Wilder's glove gate theory. And that's some shit that I just can't get jiggy with. That's some shit that got me looking at y'all niggas like, eh, y'all nigga, you for real, bro? You mad because he? All right, my nigga. Okay. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. That shit ain't cool, man. Y'all niggas. Learn to think on your own. Because I ain't going to care. I'm going to look at a nigga sideways. You tell me. <clears throat> he was cheated. He was robbed. You know, spike water and anvil in the glove, nigga. Horseshoes and rock boulders and all that shit in the club. Or in the glove. I'm going to look at you like, prove it. Like, <laughs> Give me an anecdotal response as to why you think that that some shit like that would be pause, uh, 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 possible. And I don't get nothing. You get what about ism? Yeah, man. Now that Fury turning off the screen in his locker room, yeah, that shit does look suspect. That shit does look suspect. But if you are a two hundred and fifty pound man and you go oops upside a nigga head for a multitude of rounds, a multitude of rounds. And you don't break your hand in the process and dent that nigga shit and, and nah. Nah, bro. You put so you put metal in your glove and you smack on a nigga. But how long did that fight go? Seven rounds, eight rounds? And you do that shit consistently throughout the duration? Bro, he is you 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 talking about a nigga being neurologically damaged and fucked up, damn near vegetable state. That's the type of damage you would inflict. You feel the difference between a solid metal object hitting you and a nigga fist. You feel that. Man, leave Chris Colbert alone, man. <laughs> That's what this shit all boils down to. Leave that nigga alone. You can't be mad at him that he feel the way that he feel, bro. 
can't be mad at that. It's my drink. Hold up. That's all I. Uh, uh, oh my god. Shit is goofy, man. Um. Hold your head up, Chris Colbert. Hold your head up. Hold your head up, man. You'll you you'll bounce back. If Tevin Farmer can bounce back, you can bounce back. I don't think he was good as Tevin Farmer. But you know, there's room, there's room for you to eat out here still, man. You can get you can get a bag off of boxing still, man. You can get a bag because you're still a notable name. You've still been in there with Rayo. Still been in there with Hector Luis Garcia. You've been in there with some notable fighters. There's money for you out here. There's money for you out here. Let's just get a couple wins under your belt. Get back in the winner's bracket. And you be all right. For the rest of you niggas, happy that this man got stopped, stopped for the second time in his career in a row, man. Shame on y'all niggas because he don't feel that Deontay Wilder was robbed, man, and cheated. You niggas is goofs, man. I'm outie.